Hey guys, welcome back to Play Retro. My name is Javi, and recently I asked you guys, what do you want to see next on this channel? I took a poll, and I asked you guys, what video you, would you guys most like to see next? And of those, the highest voted answer, we got 67 votes. Uh, you guys would like to see a retro art guide for the new RGT5XX+. Plus. So, only thing is with that is that RetroArch is not as simple as just putting everything in one video. Um, so, I'm going to turn that into a video series. So, in this video, we're going to do the second highest voted uh, option, which is turning your RG35XX Plus into a dedicated console. So, here you can see I'm playing Mega Man for PSP. I'm using my 8 bit control hooked up via Bluetooth, and I got my RG35XX Plus hooked up to the TV via HDMI. And look at this setup. Okay, let's go here, go here, 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 all is gold. Here, oh my goodness. Here. Mm, let's go here. Um, No good options right now with this one. Let's go here. It's a safe option, I guess. Um, let's go. So in front of me is everything you're gonna need for this setup. You're gonna need your RG35XX Plus. Uh, you're gonna need any Bluetooth controller. I'm not sure if every single one is compatible, but you want one that has um, an Xbox or Windows mode, as you can see on this controller. This is the one I was I'm using in in the demo you just shot, you just saw. Um, but you can also use any existing controller you have, maybe a PS4, DualShock 4. Um, this is a Series X controller, works fine. And you're gonna need an, a mini HDMI to regular standard HDMI cable. Uh, you you would probably need maybe I would say a ten foot minimum, um, just so you can have the 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 handheld close to you. But it's really up to you. Any any size will work. I like to keep the the the, the handheld close to me though. So all you're gonna do power this on. We're gonna do a little bit of preparation. Okay, so before we do anything, we want to start with a little bit of preparation. Uh, get your device booted up. I want you to go into settings, <clears throat> and I want you to scroll down. So you see this reset retro art config and just press press a and then yes okay so the reason I ask you to do this is just in case your retro arc is in Chinese um, if you do press the reset button it's gonna reset itself back to Chinese so if you ever did press that button it's gonna be messed up so press reset uh, retro arc config and then press start retro arc I'm gonna see start retro arc yes So now we're over here in RetroArch. I want you to navigate to menus. Then from menus, I want you to navigate into input. We're gonna change three things in here. Okay, first thing is this right here. Analog dead zone. And I want you to change this to 0.02. Um, what this is gonna do is if you do use a controller like this with analogs and it does have a little bit of stick drift, it's not gonna let your menu go crazy. Next, I want you to go into menu controls right here. And then I want you to click this option right here. It says all users control menu. Turn that on. Then back out. And then last, I want you to go into hotkeys. And then I want you to press quick controller combo. It's defaulted to none. And I just want you to set the start and select. Okay. Then from here, you're going to back out, back out. And then go back to main menu. And then you're going to go into configuration file. Save current configuration. You should see a little notification here, and then you're good to go. So then you can quit out of RetroArch. And now let's hook this up to the TV. Okay, so now I want you to take your HDMI, plug it into a port on your TV, remembering which, which uh, input it's in. And I want you to take the mini HDMI and plug that into the top of your RG35XX. Okay, the screen should go black. And then you want to go to your TV inputs and then put it to the right one. I've already set it to this and you see it right there. I named it RG35XX Plus just for this video. Okay, so now we're on the big screen. Now I want you to go navigate all the way over to settings. You want to go down to Bluetooth settings 
enable Bluetooth. By default, it's going to be on close. You want to see open. Now is when you want to turn your controller on and put it into pairing mode. So in this case, I just press this button and there's a pair button right here. Okay, so you, you got your control in pairing mode. You want to click search device and then press X to refresh. Give that a second. Okay, and now you should see it here somewhere, whatever the name of your controller is. In this case, 8 bit though light gamepad. Press A, and boom. Nice and paired. Now you should be able to navigate the menu with at least the D pad, but if you cannot, We're going to set that up anyway, so we can make sure it works. So I want you to scroll down till you find this menu. It says buttons custom. I want you to click on that. And then the first option, joystick buttons custom. And you should see the name of your controller. In this case, 8-bit Doe Light Gamepad. <clears throat> Go ahead and press A. And now I want you to set everything you see here, starting with the D-pad. So D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right, select, start, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, L2, R2. And look, in this case, this controller doesn't have analogs. So what I would do here is just exit out the menu. You see it say it says, hold up for three seconds to exit out. So like right here, if I try to press left and log up, it won't register, which is fine. You're just going to press and hold. One, two, three. And you're just going to press save settings. And press A here to save those settings. You're going to back out. And that should be good. You should be able to use the controller regardless. If you if your controller does have analog sticks, just just map to analog sticks. Okay. Now we're gonna go into RetroArch. Go ahead and start RetroArch again. And you should be able to control it with this controller now. So I want you to go into into input. and then port two controls. And this is gonna be defaulted. So what you wanna do is actually press set all controls. You can see here, for the most part, it's set mostly right, but you see that the analog is not working because it's on auto. So we'll go back, I'm gonna go all the way here. And you wanna press set all controls, press A, and then it says B button, press B, then Y, then select, then start, then D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right, D-pad, I mean, uh, A, X, left shoulder, right shoulder, L2, R2, L3, this doesn't have an L3, so I'll leave it alone, right and left analog right, left analog left down up right left down up and that's all your controls right there and you could configure it too if you really wanted to you could swap this so right now i have this to the analogs these two to the analogs but you could set this this to d-pad and this to analog so you could have these two as analog if you want it really it's really up to you and then from there you should be able to use you should be able to use all controls properly. So now I want you to go ahead, go back to main menu, quit RetroArch, and now you'll notice you can actually use the analog to navigate the menu. Okay, now I want you to go into RetroArch game, click A, and then pick a system that you wanna use on the TV. Um, I would do one by one, because if you set it globally, it causes problems. So just go into whatever system. I'm going to do Dreamcast for this example. We're going to do Crazy Taxi 2. 
Yeah, as soon as that loads up, just press menu. That'll get you into the RetroArch menu, and you should be able to use this now to navigate the menu. Uh, now you want to go down to controls, and I want you to go to port 2 controls. By default, it's set to 2, so you want to move it to 1. And then I also want you for Dreamcast, I want you to set the L and R to left trigger and right trigger. For this controller, because that's these bigger buttons. If you don't use it, it it's it, basically it's it's mapped to these and you have to use these little buttons. But you want to do that. Just change that real quick. And then should be set to mapped port one. So that's, that's basically telling RetroArch, I want this control to be player one. So that's what that's doing. You can go back. Manage remap files. And then I want you to say right here it says save core remap file. So you're going to save this for the entire core. Uh, so Flycast with a Dreamcast emulator. This is going to be completely saved across the board for Dreamcast. So you're going to press, press that. And you get a little notification saying it's saved. Okay. Then I want you to back out. And you go to overrides and just save core overrides. Okay. And now you should be good to go. Uh, once you go back to your quick menu, press resume. And you should be good to go. So now I'm just going to show, I'm going to just demo this game real quick. So you guys can see it actually works. And I'm going to show you it, it's saved. We're back. It's crazy. It's Press start. Let's go around the apple. Play by normal rules. I like Iceman. So yeah, now this should, this should work as the right trigger. And this has the left trigger, so I'm gonna try to keep this on screen. I'm not gonna lie, I love I love how Dreamcast runs on this. Not every game, obviously, but. I really like this control as well because it's such a good option. I just picked this up on Amazon for like 20 bucks. So if you don't have a Bluetooth controller or you want something like this that's just D-pads, this is a great option. It's just $20, $20, not expensive at all. Especially for something like this, you don't really want to spend more money. 20 is not asking a lot. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here. I'm gonna cut it here and do you, now you have that shortcut because I I, allow, I asked I told you to change the shortcut so now you can press star and select to exit out of the game and that'll bring you back to the main menu and you should be good to go from here and now I'm gonna just load up a uh, the same game or a different game uh, let's do crazy taxi one You should see that core uh, remap file loaded. Just notifications. And now this is basically saved across the board. So I can use this for this, this game as well. Oops. Always press press A and put myself in reverse. Yeah. 
Oh, snap. If you want to use this as a a second control and you want to use this as player one, you're going to have to change this. So you're going to go into your quick menu, go back to controls, and then change this port to controls. And then change the map port back from one to two. So then you can use this as player one and then this as player two. But this is a this is supposed to be a one player setup. So and then additionally, like let's say you add another control, um, you want to map that to maybe player two or port port two. That way, this is player two and this is player one. Okay, but I'll I'll show you that in a, in another video. But yeah, I just wanted I wanted to throw that in there. Um, as you can see, it works fine. So I just want you to exit out of this. So let's hit resume, press start and select. That'll back out. So you'll notice this is only saved for Dreamcast. And when you go into a different game, it's not going to work. So let's go into... Okay, so I got Super Mario World right here. Go ahead and press A. And now you want to basically do the same thing for any other system you want to use. But the reason I don't want to save it globally is because... First of all, I don't think you're going to play all the systems... And then you're going to have to change it back again if you decide you you want to use this as player two. So just do it per system, in my opinion. You can save it globally, but I would prefer you do it this way. So now go ahead and press menu. And you're going to do the same thing in the quick menu. Navigate to controls, port two controls, and then change the map port to port one. Okay, and this should already be set. Uh because this this is a, a, a Nintendo controller. I mean, not Nintendo. This is like a Switch style controller. So uh, everything is in the right position as far as A, B, uh, Y, and X are. See, it says uh, Y is left, which is there. Start and select. So yeah, that should be good to go. Go ahead and back out. Manage remap files. Save core remap file. You get a little notification. And then scroll down to overrides, save core overrides, and you should be good to go. So now just quick resume, and then you should be you should be good to go. Go ahead, one player game. So yeah, in this case, I would actually want to switch this for instead of this being D-pad, I'll change this to D-pad, so it's a little bit more comfortable because I can't use the analog in this. So actually, I'll show you how to do that. So press menu. And you want to exit. Let's just quit RetroArch right now. Do you want to go here? Press start RetroArch. You want to say yes. You want to go into settings, go down to input, port to controller. You'll see the name of your device. And then I want you to press set all controls again. This time we're going to map analog uh, D pad to this and write analog to this. So I'm going to press set all controls. And now it's going to say B button, Y, select, start. D-pad up, down, left, right, A, X, left shoulder, right shoulder, L2, R2, L3 we don't have, so we can leave that alone. Uh, left analog, right, left, down, up, right, left, down, up, and that's all your controls. Once that's done, I want you to just... Go to save controller profile, and that should be good.
save current configuration, quit RetroArch. So yeah guys, now this should be mapped to D-pad and this is your analogs. So I just swapped that around real quick just to make it more comfortable for a game like this. And there you have it, guys. That's how you consoleize your RG35XX. Sorry, I'm so bad at Mario. But yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, it might not look exactly like this because you may have a control like this. I did run into a few issues here and there trying to configure something like this. Um, the process is basically the same. Just be go a little bit slow when you're putting the analogs. Just because it, you have to make sure it's a straight up input or straight down input. If you even go slightly to the right, it won't register when you're in that settings menu. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, like I said, I wouldn't save everything globally because you do have to change it back. If you ever decide you want to like use this as um, as a second player. Um, but if if you are going to use it like just for yourself and you know you're never going to use it with anybody else just save it globally that that way it works across all all systems also you want to configure each system each like each controls uh for example like in game boy um game boy advance you have a b but x and y aren't really being used so you could map those to turbo or to fast forward and stuff like that um just to make your gameplay just a little bit easier also if you want you can change the hockey to enter the menu in this case, I didn't do that. I just have start and select to exit out of the game. So for me, that works better, but it's really up to you. I think it's better just to leave it like this. That way you don't mess the configuration of how this is when you unplug this. And um, another tip is make sure you're, you're, not, you're not plugging in while you're in game. You want to do this outside the menu. That way you don't run into any issues. And that should be perfectly fine. Um, don't forget to turn off the, the Bluetooth when you're done playing so you don't drain battery for no reason. This thing will um, remember the Bluetooth. So if you leave it on and then you turn it you turn it off and you turn it back on, the Bluetooth is going to go on. Your control is going to connect if the control is on. So that's pretty good. Um, I want you to go ahead and turn that off, though, if you're done with it. And then don't forget to turn off your controller. But yeah, guys, um, that's how you consoleize your RG35XX Plus. I think it's super cool you can do this. And this will work pretty much across the board uh, with your controllers. I, I did it with this one just because this is such a cool controller. And it's so cheap, too. It's only $20. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big um, joystick guy. I love D-pad, especially for a system like this that just plays like old games. Especially for me, I'm, I'm more into the, the older games, the more retro games, SNES, um, Game Boy Advance, and, and the like. So for me, this control is perfect for me. But you can use your existing controls as well. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and again, you're going to need a cable like this, a mini HDMI cable. So yeah, um, I did want to show you one last thing real quick. For my, If you guys saw my post where I, I created stickers for you guys, a sticker just like this. So I actually cut it wrong, but essentially this is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like a cartridge inside um, uh, a Game Boy. So yeah, I want to show you what you guys are actually going to get for the first 25 people who, who actually um, send me that email. This is what you're going to get inside the mail. So you're going to open this up and inside you're going to see these six stickers. You have Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue. Um, uh, Legend of Zelda's uh, Link's Awakening, and then hold on, let me move these over. You're gonna get Tetris, Super Mario Land, and Metroid 2. I try to give you a good mix. You know, this is really the games you guys requested. But I like, for example, I threw in Pokemon Yellow because 
those two were kind of tied, Pokemon Yellow and Blue. So I gave you a bonus. Instead of five stickers, you're gonna get six. Um, you know, it's it wasn't it wasn't that, like that much more to to get it. And then um, I I gave you this a DX with the black because I thought it looked so nice. So you have these colored cartridges and you have the old school gray ones. I know a lot of people ask for this Tetris right here. I think it looks real good. Some of them look kind of aged, which looks pretty cool. And some of them look a little bit newer. Like this one, I think, looks pretty new. So yeah, you have a good mix. Um, if one of the stickers breaks on you, you can use another one. You get bored of it, you can switch it. But yeah, if you guys end up receiving it, you know, give it to your friends, the extra ones, or hold on to it. Whatever you want to do, it's, it's for you guys, you know. And yeah, stay tuned for my retro art guide. I'm going to turn that into a series. Um, RetroArch is not, it's not super simple to just put into one video, even though I could put in the main parts, but I would rather turn that into a series and give you a deep dive on all the things you can do. For example, like setting up these, uh, these playlists and how to scrape art, um, a deep dive into, into like controls, net play, the performance settings, changing uh, your shaders and your filters and your overlays and stuff like that how to save per core, how to serve, save per game, uh, how to auto load and auto save and stuff like that. I'm going to show you all that, but I'm going to turn it into a series. That way it's easier to digest. I'd rather not throw everything into one video and just overwhelm you guys. I'd rather turn it into a series that you guys can watch and follow along easier. So yeah, uh, leave a like if this video helped you out. Let me know what's the first game you guys are going to play when you get this set up. I'm going to leave links for all the stuff used in this video. This controller, an Xbox controller, this HDMI cable in the description below. Uh, subscribe for more content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.